So one of the reasons that I consider the late R.C. Sproul as one of the greatest Christian teachers is because that's exactly what he did. He taught while he preached. He went as far as to use a chalkboard to present breakdowns and explanations regarding what he was actually preaching. I remember loving that about his old Ligonier classroom sessions. The first few years of my conversion, I remember using a notepad to take notes on what he was actually writing on the chalkboard. I learned a lot those first few years because of those clips that were posted on Ligonier. Now, one of the things I learned from RC is that it's important to listen first and then to analyze what you've just heard before jumping to a conclusion. For instance, I remember on my first channel, the first channel I have, I uploaded a clip by RC titled, RC Proves That God Doesn't Exist. And immediately, immediately you come to a conclusion that what was just said is ridiculous. But it's true, and RC perfectly explains why it is true in this clip. I gave a lecture once at an Orlando conference where the whole point of my lecture was to deny as emphatically as I could and as categorically as I knew how the existence of God. And when I began that lecture, I said, what my task is today is to convince you folks that God does not exist. <gasps> Came this gasp from the crowd. What are you talking about? What kind of game are you playing with? I'm not playing. I said, the worst thing that we could ever happen to us is to discover that God exists in the specific meaning of the term exist. Because the term exists in our language has derived etymologically from the Latin existere, which means, ex means out of, and stere means to stand. So somebody who exists is somebody that's outstanding. <laughs> but outstanding in what sense? Well, what was meant by this, this word philosophically uh, centuries ago, uh, going all the way back to Plato and before Plato, was the idea that there is being, pure and simple, and pure being depends on nothing for its ability to be. It is eternal. It has the power of being within itself. It is by no means creaturely. The thing that characterizes creaturely existence is not being, but becoming. Because the chief character trait of all creatures is they change. Whatever you are today, you will be different ever so slightly tomorrow. And today, you're that much different from what you were yesterday, if it's only that you're 24 hours older than you were at this time yesterday. Now, the idea of existence says to exist is to stand out of something. And the idea meant to stand out of being. So that something that exists is something that has one foot in being and the other foot in becoming or in non-being, unless it's connected somehow to being, it couldn't be. We wouldn't be human beings, we'd be human becomings. Uh, but and if it were had both feet in being, it couldn't be a creature. Now the point I'm saying is, is that we don't want to think of God like this. If you ask me, is God, I say, yes, of course God is. But does he exist? Not in this sense, because that would make him what? A creature, a dependent, derived existence. But rather, we say God is here. God is being, not becoming, not changing. He is eternally the same. And so we say there's one being. Now, within that being are not three separate existences. Remember the difference in the prefix. Exist means to stand out of being or non-being, but the word that the theologians use with respect to the Trinity is not the word three existences, but three subsistences. That is, underneath the pure being of God. At a lower dimension, 
we must distinguish among these subsistences which the Bible calls Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Not three existences, not three beings, but rather three subsistences within that one eternal being. 